Hi, Jeb. So I'm really glad that you could join us here recorded because I unfortunately know that you couldn't make it to the live to be here live. So we're, we talked about how this might work and in the event that you couldn't join, here you are. So we're still able to help people with your insights um, through this recorded piece that we've done here. So I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you for joining us. All right. Yeah, Cameron, thanks so much for having me. And thank you to the Western New York chapter, of the ASMP for having me uh, all the way from North Carolina. And again, if you're watching this video, I'm actually in Florida right now on a shoot. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how I came to the current iteration of my website that's been through, I don't know, hundreds of different versions. Um, and really in the past with my former versions of my website, it's really been kind of a like, oh, that's cool. This looks cool. I'll do it this way kind of thing. Um, and that doesn't make any sense because that's not what I do with my clients. With my clients, I'm asking them, what are their goals? What are they trying to achieve? What are they trying to say about their brand to their clients? Um, and so finally, in this iteration of my website, I can answer some of those, own, some of those questions uh, in a way that hopefully still looks good, but has a little bit more functionality and um, helps people find what they need. And hopefully that means them booking me and working with me um, because I can't help them if they don't book me. So, um, you know, you land on the homepage. If that's the first page you land on, you might get to that in a little bit. Um, and definitely wanted to greet folks with an inviting and warm image. Um, you know, the saying that most of us photographers know is that a portrait is more about the connection between the photographer and the subject than it is about just the subject. So um, these clients that you see in front of you are people I've uh, worked with and collaborated with to the point that they were comfortable with my presence. And so they, they got to be my hero shot here in the beginning. Um, I've got this tagline, imagery that speaks your truth. So I am a commercial and portrait photographer. Um, I specialize in personal brand stories and uh, brand story libraries for individuals, for businesses, for brands. Um, so I am the person who's working with everybody from the small bakery down the street to a Fortune 500 company. Um, and finding kind of the connection between those two groups was something I had to take some time to think about. Like why, what would make one choose me and the other? Because, you know, I think that in commercial photography, at least after speaking with other commercial photographers, it can kind of feel like you can only be a big dog and you couldn't possibly work with small businesses or something. And that's just not me. So anyway, uh, I kind of came up with this line, imagery that speaks your truth. And what's behind that for me is I started to notice with certain clients that there is this disconnect between the imagery they're showing and what it's actually like to experience their brand or shop with them. And um, I really just kind of that's my vibe. That's how I work. I want to work with what's the real story behind you. And, um, that, so that's where that phrase comes from. And then, you know, you can find out more here in, in the paragraph and find out more about that, uh, by reading into my philosophy, why I do what I do, um, that kind of thing. And, you know, I've even got this video on the front page kind of explaining what I mean by that, because otherwise it might just sound like a tagline. Yeah. Could you talk for a minute about these different elements on the bottom of your homepage? Because you have this bold text, then you have the smaller text, then you have the video, you have testimonial, and then you have you know, call to action. And I don't think those were accidentally put there. No, they're not accidentally put there. Um, 
you know, you, you only have this short amount of time to capture people's attention, to deliver an answer to the question they had, because they're not clicking on your website if they don't have some question. And then to hopefully make a connection with them, which is the call to action. So, you know, I'm leading with the tagline that's bold and big that hopefully sets some kind of tone for the reader, for the consumer. And then if they want to, they can, you know, read this paragraph here, but they're more likely to want to just dive into a video. Um, so the video there explains what's in the paragraph to the left. Um, it's me speaking it directly to camera. So hopefully it feels a little bit more personal for them. And then, you know, obviously we've got a testimonial. One of the first things we all do when we shop is look at reviews. What am I getting into? Um, fortunately, I haven't had any bad reviews, so I get to post this really kind review and, uh, you know, let people know that, yes, other people like working with me. Mm -hmm. And then right next to it, we've got a call to action where, you know, if you click on this get in touch, you're going to go straight to my contact page and find out that you can book a free 30 minute discovery meeting. Um, you've got plenty of options on this form to, uh, you know, kind of let me know what you're really looking for as well as the option to say, I don't know, help me. Um, because I also feel that that's really a big part of our job is as photographers, as any small business owner is to help people get what they're looking for and what they need. Mm -hmm. Can I mention something too about the testimonial that um, you kind of referenced, but I think it's important to call this out is that it also implies and shows right away the end of the story of working with you. And it's the conclusion. It's, it's right away. I see how does the relationship end that, that from working with you is it mm. end in a successful, happy way, or is it, this was a terrible experience and <laughs> I'm never going to work <laughs> with the guy again, <laughs> you know? So it, it shows you know, the, uh, com the, the, the narrative of working with you is, is that's the end point. And what people often, I think also want to be in that place too. Right. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, as we know, attractive people are chosen for uh, imagery that's associated with brands and stuff because people want to visualize themselves as that person. And so absolutely, these testimonials are there to help people visualize what it will be like when they've worked with me after they've finished, that they're going to be happy and feel good about the decision they made. And then just below that section too, you have a few other kind of calls to action. Yeah. Down here in the footer, um, we've got, uh, of course, the obvious things like follow me on Instagram. That's a good place to connect. Um, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, that's a big one. And in the past, it hasn't been. That's something I'm striving to be doing a better job of uh, in 2021 is staying connected with the people who said, I want to connect with you. The fact that somebody would sign up to get more email, to get more distracted is a great compliment. So I'm trying to, to do a better job of staying in touch with them. I'm doing about a quarterly, maybe twice in a quarter, because I really don't want to come off spammy. Um, but yeah, we're, we're keeping people up to date. Even if they're not ready right now to sign up for a photo shoot, the subscription, you know, it, it keeps them abreast of what I'm doing, the shoots I'm doing, the kind of things that I'm about and, you know, is there to help them maybe make that decision in the future or pass it on to a friend that they think I could help out. Now you have Getty images there too, which is interesting and something you don't see that often. I think some people might think that that's competition for your assignment business, but can you talk a little bit about why they are, not competing or, or what's the relationship between your getting your stock or getting a, an assignment image that's tailored to someone's solution? You know, I, th I think to be really blunt about it, I think budget is the difference. You know, in the past, I've also thought like I'm, I'm 
assignment only. I'm not going to do any stock. And that didn't, doesn't really make sense when I think about it. I think, well, they're going to go get stock anyway. So why shouldn't I offer them my stock? Mm -hmm. You know, choosing stock now doesn't mean they're not going to choose assignment in the future. We all have budgets. We all, you know, would love to eat a certain thing every night, but we can only afford to have it once in a while. And it's just pretty simple to me. So yeah, I did sign up to be a Getty contributor. My library isn't uh, very filled out yet. Thanks to a pandemic, I, I didn't end up going out on a lot of the shoots that I had planned last year. Um, but that is there and it's an option for folks who don't have the budget for a full assignment and can just jump right in and, and grab what they need. Would you also say that as a business, a photography business, creative business, it's a, another revenue stream coming in that's part of the whole overall plan for how revenue is coming into your business? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great to see that you got something, you got, you got a few extra bucks in the bank account while you were sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that from the transactional side, but if you're going through a long spell without any assignments, um, you can turn your personal work, you can get out and be giving yourself assignments that can generate income. Even if that income is a little bit more on the back end than what we're used to, you still have this opportunity to uh, photograph the way you want to shoot, photograph what you want to shoot, and uh, make some money off of it. Yeah. I think one other plug I would make for assignment photography is that you get a premium asset type, which is versatile across many different platforms and manipulated in ways that sometimes JPEG stock images can't be. Sure. We, we've probably all seen the memes, you know, made out of stock photography and it certainly is a little more generic and you, and you might only have the budget for a non-exclusive license with stock and, and find out that your competitor is using the same imagery as you. So assignment photography will always be, you know, what I want to yell from the mountaintops, but stock is definitely an option too. Sure. And I think it makes a lot of sense f for businesses to use both stock and assignment photography for a variety of reasons and, and what they're using those images or visuals or motion for too. Yeah, absolutely. Depending upon a business's own content strategy, it can just plain be really hard to have enough content to feed the beast of social media. Um, you know, you can do a library shoot with me and, you know, maybe you get 20, 25 images. Is that 20 or 25 posts, you know, or are you going to keep reusing the same imagery? So you, you might just need that stock to kind of help bolster um, the rest of your content, your more custom content. Okay, great. Let's, let's move forward to the, uh, some other, so we've come here to your homepage. Yeah. Uh, optimally where you want people to first come if they enter your website this way. And then we kind of move through what they're going to be interested in, which is they want to see what your images are. So they're going to try to find those most obviously in the portfolio section. So you have those there mm -hmm. and then they can also jump around further. But so let's go through these. I think people are probably going to go to the portfolio. They want to see what else I've done. And um, I find that case studies are huge. You know, I think that people kind of have an idea of what portraits look like. Maybe not brand stories. We can get to that. But the case studies are kind of like an expanded testimonial to me. Um, so they might come over to case studies and land on one of these pages and a case study is what it sounds like. It's, uh, it's an example of the work that I've done. Um, so if they land here, they're going to see some work I did for LabCorp, um, which here I try to outline, you know, what the, what the problem was, what the solution was to the problem who I worked with, um, you know, it's always good to give credit where credit is due and, you know, keep those relationships in good standing. So 
if you worked with an agency, if it was direct to client, whatever, you want to get that information on a page like this. Um, so here, yeah, they can check out the gallery. Um, pretty easy to navigate, I think. And, um, you know, roll through these photos and then they can also come down here and see them in use and some behind the scenes uh, if I had behind the scenes. So I, I think that's a, a good thing to show if you have it, if you have rights, if you're not embargoed and all that, if you can share it. I definitely recommend sharing the behind the scenes and sharing what it looks like once it's in use. Because again, kind of going back to the testimonials, I think people want to see how they can put their imagery to work um, beyond their social media account. So, you know, in this particular page, I've got screenshots from LabCorp's uh, website, screenshots from the product that they were making. It's called Pixel by LabCorp, um, where, you know, wherever this stuff showed up, wherever I could find it. So <laughs> you might need to keep in mind to follow your clients on social media and keep up with what they're doing so you can, you know, see your stuff getting used. That's a good point. Now, a question too about how you um, edited the library images. Is this comprehensive or is this a selection that's representative? This is a definitely a selection that's representative. The, of, the, of the deliverables? Yeah, yeah. This, this particular shoot was a three-day shoot um, and... Let me see the the gallery that went up. The gallery that wasn't delivered to the client had easily five or six hundred photos in it. Um, the client, I'd have to look, but based on our original contract, I believe that they were getting forty to forty-five images with the option to buy extras if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so this is definitely just a selection of those images, but this is enough to kind of tell the story of, of what we were doing there. And it is, it is a story, isn't it? There's this sort of narrative of these different people who are part of the company. Yeah, uh, there, there is, we, we've gone from, um, scientists in the, you know, at the very beginning of the journey through the, the machinery, the folks who are just kind of scanning and, and entering things, and all the way down to sporting mail for the 23andMe um, service and getting into their aviation uh, division. Mm -hmm. You know, LabCorp flies all kinds of uh, samples across the country every day um, and, and he picks them up and brings them back to Burlington, North Carolina to go back and repeat this process all over again, whether it's your 23 and me results or, or the blood test you're really waiting on because you're in the hospital. Yeah. And that's because one of the things that I was just noticing, well, I wasn't just noticing it, but I was just thinking, it. <laughs> but um, cause I've seen these before, but um, is, you know, you call that this a brand library. And I think a lot of photographers call that service brand libraries but within this work, you have to be a portrait photographer, still life, a lifestyle photographer. Like you're wearing a lot of different hats. Like mm -hmm. they're not bringing in a still life photographer and then a portrait photographer. And then like, so you have this sort of the whole package here. Yeah, especially with this particular job and, and some other jobs I've done similarly to this. Uh, that's very true. Um, challenges for this shoot was I was piggybacking with a video crew. Um, none of the photographs in this library were setups. Um, we had pretty strict instruction and pretty strict crew with us from LabCorp representatives from the client of the client um, to make sure that we you know, weren't photographing proprietary things to make sure that we weren't disturbing the work. Um, and a lot of these areas are whisper environments. So 
uh, it was really an experience of being quick on your feet and getting what we what we could within those requirements. Um, now I don't want to paint the picture that it wasn't the, you know, that it was unpleasant cause it wasn't at all. It was just really, you know, you had a very short amount of time to do this kind of work. So it was challenging getting portrait, everything from portraits to still life and back again. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, I did do some still life only shoots for them for their pixel product. Yeah. Um, but they're not a part of this library because that was just a different shoot. Yeah. I think the overall brand message is people Mm -hmm. in in part here is I I don't come away thinking, Oh, Jeb, the still life photographer, but, but it's certainly part of that storytelling element is being able to show that you have that versatility um, to create a package like this. Yeah. Thank you. And this, sorry, is, go ahead. this is pre COVID. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have been doing this during COVID. That's for sure. Yeah. Just want to clarify that, I guess. Great. So this is a really great example. I think of a, of a case study, um, which I think people sometimes think of as a blog or mm. something it could go somewhere else. But I, I think how you've, how you're putting it into its own portfolio of case studies makes the blog something different and makes it more permanent in a way, whereas it's not, not not that it couldn't be part of a blog, but, but it has a more of a, of a gallery project type thing. One of the things I love about it too, is it shows the the whole story arc, um, you know, of working with you. It shows that you, you're, you know what you're doing with this type of assignment, and you've thought about the customer that needs this type of assignment what would loves to read this so that they they see that their problem has been solved by you that you solve this kind of problem and you're demonstrating that you're demonstrating your authority to do that by showing this example from start to finish so there's to me there's a sense of empathy for your audience that they they need that bit of text it's really helpful for them to, to see, yeah, they could call you up on the phone and ask you about this, but y- they don't have to do that because it's all here for them. And they can see this and be like, okay, this guy might be able to solve our problem. Okay, so here we are in portraits. And I'm curious about the strategy for showing you know, these singular portrait images. The client, potential client is gonna see a lot of singular images um, which is different from the narrative of a, of a brand story or a library. So here they are looking for that like singular image um, at, at an overview kind of, kind of mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Um, and each one is, is supposed to be different. So they're not re- too repetitive. Yeah. Uh, so other than the fact that I'm drawn to portraits, um, I think this page is important, and, and really, I, I say it right here with the first words on the page, humans are hardwired to connect with faces. All of my clients are clients who serve other people. And when serving other people, you know, it makes sense to lead with imagery that people automatically connect with. We see faces in inanimate objects, you know, that we're just automatically drawn to them. So this gallery is, again, an example of, you know, the relationship that I have with subjects and gives consumers who are shopping my website or art buyers uh, the opportunity to see the kind of relationships I have with my subjects and the kind of imagery they can expect from me um, in expression. I also find that this page answers a question for me that I get a lot from people when they call me up or schedule their um, discovery call is people say they they may have found me because I also make headshots and they say oh I can't wait to make a headshot I want to do something you know that really kind of shows people more about me and this gives me the opportunity to guide them to what a brand portrait versus just kind of a profile picture headshot 
looks like, you know, where we get into more environmental portraits and, and show them that we can share photography of them working in their space and their environment and that kind of thing to, to connect more with their own customer base. And so, yeah, we've got a variety here, but I think this particular edit for this portfolio, you notice almost everybody's smiling. Um, and, and I think that that speaks to the kind of photographer I am to work with, the kind of shoots I like to do, um, which is fine. If I get passed up for something that's too moody or something, that's fine with me because I like to have fun when I make photography, um, I, I got out of the corporate life so that I could have fun. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, just a question too about the overall strategy on this page. Okay. Um, can you go back to the top of the page? Yeah. Okay. So what are we looking at here? I led with this image because I think it's really strong. The her eyes are extremely connected in this image. And that is precisely why I led with it. Um, mm -hmm. Connection means everything to me in the work I do, in the way I do work, and not just the photography. Um, a little line that you might see showing up throughout my brand is relationships are greater than transactions. I believe so much in connecting people, and that is really what's behind choosing an image like this for the header, especially when everybody else in the gallery has big smiles. Um, and she's not so much smiling here, but she is confident and she is connected and she's not in a position of fear or anything like that. Um, so I thought it was a really strong image to lead with. Mm -hmm. And then when you scroll down a, a little bit mm -hmm. now, what is that stuff above the pictures? Oh, that text up there? Yeah, what is that? You never... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that text... Um, Why is it there? What does it do? Well, it takes me out of being a mystery and, and speaks to people exactly, you know, what I want them to know about this page. They need to be thinking about what they could be doing for their brand if they yeah. make some portraits, if they... Uh, put the people on display that help their people. And I know people that get into photography typically don't get into photography to write. <laughs> 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 writing, ten, it's writing tends, it's hard for everyone. Um, so uh, it does take work to think about what you're going to say. So it, so it resonates in a clean, concise, clear way to the, your intended audience and it doesn't just happen like it you have to work at it you really do um in fact i'm going to go back to the home page and point out that just earlier today i edited this first paragraph this intro paragraph before it said i believe great images allow you to be or your authentic self to shine and promote your brand in the best version of itself and I felt like there was some friction between the word authentic and best version, especially during the pandemic, because I think a lot of people right now kind of laugh when they think about their authentic self. They're thinking about maybe the not so pretty authenticity of being in your pajamas all day long or, you know, only having a Zoom shirt while your pajama pants are on below that and that kind of thing. And it's so I really, you know, it's stuck in my mind that these things aren't really jiving with each other the way they did before. And I also kind of think that the word authenticity has become a buzzword and I don't like to be a buzzword person. So yes, that was a long winded way to say constantly editing, Yeah, constantly editing. But I guess, you know, once your site is at this place, you will always be editing it, but you're editing it with a purpose and a strategy. And you just keep, if you evolve and it evolves with you as you keep, you know, moving forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that it's really important from a customer service standpoint 
um, to remove friction where possible, to think about stripping away more than adding and less adding really does something to remove friction for um, the people you seek to serve. Right. Now, what happens when you get to the very bottom of the gallery? You have another call to action right before the footer. This shows up on every page to the point that it seems like it's part of the footer. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's another opportunity to say, thanks for scrolling. We should talk. Yeah, great. So let's, what other galleries do we have here? Brand, so brand, yeah. brand stories, I'll, I'll briefly hit this one. Um, brand stories will actually repeat some of the images that are in the portraits gallery. Um, and I think that's fine because all this does is just expand it a little bit more. It's not quite a full case study, but you get a little bit more of what's going on. And as you see, when I roll over these images, there's more text to give some context of, you know, who the client was, what kind of space, you know, we, we all can make assumptions about what kind of space they're in by seeing who they are. Um, so you quickly can see that, that, certain sets of images go together um, and, and helps them be part of a cohesive story mm -hmm. uh, based on the client name that pops up as you okay. scroll through them. Again, at the bottom, we've got another call to action. Right. So it's a quicker overview in mm -hmm. many ways of, of your work. And then you also have motion and headshots, which is, you know, not everyone, every photographer does motion or has a motion solution themselves. Do you do the, what part of motion do you do? I do uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, I find out from a client who, who needs or wants motion. I find out first kind of the scope of what they're needing. And if it's something I can handle and I can, I can self produce, I will do it. If it's, something that needs um, a little bit more of a certain kind of attention, then I'll reach out to friends of mine in the industry and, you know, build a crew. And so I might go from being the, the one-stop shop to being the DP on a video shoot or even a gaffer on a video shoot. Um, just I'm always trying to find the right person uh, for the job that, that serves the client best. So yeah, if, if you go to my motion page, you know, you see a mix of things here that I've either done on my own, um, like this little promo to things that, uh, I was DP on or even in the role of a uh, director, but you, either, I'm you, sorry, go ahead. And you clearly explain that with your captions here. Yeah. I, I want to be fully transparent. I don't, I don't try to, you know, pull, <laughs> pull any tricks on anybody and, and say that I made this thing that I didn't make. Uh, I always think it, it takes a team and, you know, unless it's a case like this promo where it doesn't take a team, but you know, for the most part, you got to name your sources. And so from a buyer's perspective, they would come to this page. It's not really a full case study, uh, explanation, but they're getting information that helps them know more what you're about and what you're what you can offer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Of, of course, you know, another call to action at the bottom. So if mm -hmm. they want to know more or need to know more, they can always get in touch. And then you also offer headshots. I do. Now, can, now that's, you know, another different client type that you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you talking to them here that might be different from your other pages, other, other client types? Um, it's, you know, it's not that much of a difference in the way that I approach it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that in general headshots are a little bit more of a retail kind of approach. Um, for instance, I'm more, I'm more likely to run a sale or a promotion about headshots or something than I would for assignment work. I love doing, I love making headshots. Um, even if they're not, you know, kind of revered in the same way that assignment work is, 
doing headshots gives me the opportunity to help people who just need a headshot, but it also gives me a great lead in to um, finding new clients for assignment work and connecting with new people to get those other jobs. You know, just in the past two weeks, I've been able to convert a couple of headshot clients to doing uh, brand story libraries. So it's been really valuable for me. Do you find that they are usually first time buyers of professional photography um, or not always? I'd say it's, a, it's probably about half and half between first time buyers and maybe they did one a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so they might as well be a first time buyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of conversation happens when I do headshots around things like licensing and, and stuff like that. And, and a lot of education <laughs> happens during that time. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So let's move along. So we also have your about page. Yeah. Uh, about section rather. So what's happening here in these different um, subheadings? Yeah. So the about Jeb is just where you would go to find out about me. You get to see my biography, my giant face on a page. Yeah. Quite simply, it's my biography. Uh, I've added in a little bit, you know, more than just my GQ shot here. Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit showing family and, and stuff like that. And so a little bit of behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, as well as stuff I'm into. So, you know, I also produce a podcast. My wife is a writer. Uh, I play music, that kind of stuff. Let people know that I am not defined by being a photographer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course, something I think is always good to share is, is some folks that you've worked with and if you're a member of any organizations. Now, something I'm noticing here that I think is kind of like really helpful is some of the clients have links to them. Do those links take you to your case studies? They do. Yes, if, if you hit one of these links. Okay, so it takes you right to your Campbell Page University, which is nice because it, you're not just looking at the name of the client, you're actually seeing what you did with them. Yeah, I think that's really nice. Um, it, I think it would be easy to, um, it's too easy to make assumptions as a, as a client, as, as a consumer. Mm -hmm. um, we all want to see what we're getting. And I really like being able to link back and show them, this is the kind of work I did for this university or this client. Mm -hmm. So that's your about page. Now you also have a, a FAQ page and a philosophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah the FAQ um, to go. This is a great place to put things that you want to say, but don't necessarily have another good place to say them. Obviously, you can put stuff in here that aren't truly frequently asked, but um, you need to have a good way to say it. So you, I can, I can send this link to folks. Yeah. The FAQ page is, uh, is great for SEO in addition to helping people get answers to the questions they need. Yeah. Um, so here I've gone through with some pretty basic, um, questions and answers. Uh, this is where you get to take some ownership with questions like this. Can you work with my budget? Um, you get it. You can answer some stuff about licensing, just some things that are sometimes sticky topics. And then you also get a chance here to, I think, add in some more fun stuff. Yeah. Um, what's it like working with me on set? I yeah. like to have fun. <laughs> I like that you have pictures in the FAQ too. Yeah, so, just, yeah, just text. Just like, you know, kind of everything we've been talking about it. It's good to show people what they're going to get. Yeah. I think the FAQ also it shows that you've thought of their problems and you've had empathy for what they might need to know. And that that's the kind of person you are like you're, you're thinking ahead before they're, you know, they've had to call you. These are some things that they're going to want to know. I know who my ideal client is and the kinds of questions they might have, or they should have. And if they haven't had it, they will have it. 
so this is like it, it, you're you're conveying that part of your brand here too. Mm -hmm. Great. So then you have over your philosophy. Oh yeah, the philosophy. Now what is it? So your philosophy here is going to be it's different from your biography. Yeah. Or your brand, uh, your narrative, your brand narrative. Yeah, I mean the biography is is a little bit of a what and the philosophy gets into a little bit more of the why. Mm -hmm. um, everybody who's who's been watching along here knows I like to work with people. I like to make portraits. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're just pulling up to the site, you might not know that. So I, I lead with that, that it's people I want to serve and people I want to photograph. Mm -hmm. uh, lets people know that I, I like to photograph people. And, and gets into why I like to photograph people and, and what kind of makes me tick as a photographer. Mm -hmm. Now... I see you also have something called services and why do you have services? Isn't your portfolio and your about page enough? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always thought. And that's what I have always gone off of when I look at the photographers who really inspire me. And so all the previous inf uh, iterations of my website have, have just been a portfolio and a contact. Um, and I think that works for folks who maybe have a rep or work in some kind of an agency situation when they're only appealing to experienced art buyers, but 99% of my clients are not experienced art buyers and services is a word that makes sense to them. It makes sense to all of us. I can click this button. I can find out what this guy offers and what he does. So if you land on my services page, you're going to find that out right away in, in big giant blocks that, that say, Hey, this is what I've got to offer. And on each of these, you can jump right into getting uh, a quote or an estimate from me. So you're repeating your call to action multiple times on the page yeah right yeah there are cases this is one of them that i think it is good to be redundant mm -hmm. people are looking for what they're looking for so mm -hmm. um you know it's kind of it seems like a duh kind of thing but you know if you don't have a button on the thing they want they might think they can't get it or they yeah. might not go the extra step to click on your contact page yeah. Yeah. So in addition to services, I have a what I do page that goes a little bit more into the process. So maybe, sure, you might know that I do commercial brand libraries, um, but you're not really sure what that looks like. What is it going to be like to book that with me? So here I've just outlined what the process is um, and you know, some things you can get into addition, stuff that happens on every shoot, um, you know, kind of how I work mm -hmm. and, you know, more calls to action. They don't see it here. They can ask me. Mm -hmm. um, and also sometimes it seems if you were to go to every page on my site, it may seem like there is a lot of redundancy or there's a lot of repetition. I think it's important to remember that not everybody lands at your website on the home page. You know, every page should be a page that somebody could land on for the first time and be able to get to what they want or need to get to and get the information that they need. That's a good point. Great. I think this is a really helpful page here for people. And then you have those sections at the bottom view my services so you have another so you're leading them here if they wanted to go here correct yeah, yeah. the services and what i do pages really go hand in hand so mm -hmm. if they land on what i do I'm gonna send them to services next if they land on services i'm gonna send them to what i do next right and then what was at the bottom of that section for services was there another menu item um yeah another way oh. to get to headshots so again with that um redundancy i just want to make sure that people find what they're looking for so that goes to that headshot page that's also the headshot portfolio because with these kinds of headshots i didn't feel like i really needed a gallery so much as i needed 
uh, the supporting information that people would need in order to make a decision. Um, so there are galleries here. They have to choose to load more, but, you know, not knocking headshots, but if you've seen a headshot on a white background, you've seen a headshot on a white background. <laughs> you don't, you don't necessarily need 40 of them to look at. Okay, great. And then we have lastly, not lastly, but the contact page. Yep. Contact page. Once again, um, right up top, I talk about the fact that, you know, there's no barrier to entry. They can talk to me for free mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. If you couldn't tell I'm a talker, they're probably going to actually get an hour. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, they can get right into the form here, which mm -hmm. is a long form. This may end up being something I revise, but for now I like it because it, you know, it pre-qualifies folks, you know, th if they look at these questions, but they're looking for a wedding photographer, then they're going to not ask me, you know, and I've not wasted their time. They've not used my time. It also does the job of getting them thinking about what they need. Mm -hmm. It already starts that process of, you know, what would normally be a questionnaire. It gets them thinking about what they want, what they need, what goals they have. Something to think about in your own web design is, of course, what it looks like for mobile users. And the form being on the right is is based on the fact that they can get in touch with me um, right away through these items. And in the mobile version of the site, this is going to show up at the top first so they can get right to me if they need to. Now, one question of, since you're over there, you've chosen those two social platforms why those two and only two? Those are the two that I'm most active on. You know, I have a Facebook page, but not very active on it. And really, the things that I do talk about on the Facebook page are either repeats of my Instagram. It's a cross posted thing, or it has more to do with my local community in Fuquay, Verena, which is where my studio is. And you know, my ideal buyer isn't necessarily in Fuquay Verena. So, you know, they can find me on Facebook if they search hard enough, but these two are the ones that are most relevant. And your, your audience is there. Yeah. Audience is there. Right. Yeah. Great. Now what's the blog about? So, uh, as, as mentioned in my about section, there are things I like other than photography. So my blog Includes photography, but gets into a little bit more about what I'm doing. Otherwise, I also like to write. Um, I'm really into music and, you know, I produce this podcast. So a lot of the most recent posts are that podcast, some creative writing that I've done, you know, about my son or, or even poetry here. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just another way that people can get to know me a little bit more. In, in a way, it sort of supports your brand story by making it fuller. Uh, yeah, definitely. The, I'm not sharing things here that are arbitrary or or completely non sequitur to my brand. I want to post things that are of service, even if they're not really on the nose. Um, it can be of service for somebody just to just to get to know more of, about me as a person. Um, in order to know what it's going to be like to work with me on set. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground there. Um, is there anything further you want to mention or talk about? You know, there's nothing I can think of. I, I think this has been good. It's been fun for me. It's been a, a good refresher to think about why I've done the things I've done. So Great. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I love that you said too earlier on how you came back and you revisited your your text, your language, and how you are kind of continually, you know, making this more refined and improving on it, you know, every every day, every week. I think that's important to not let it just be a, a static uh thing. Yeah. Um you know that that show undercover boss like you being a one a one person show here it can be uh, difficult at times to kind of or or I should say easy at times to forget 
what it would be like to experience myself as a customer from a consumer's point of view. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, every couple of weeks or maybe even more often just visiting your own site, seeing what it would be like if you were, again, a bakery owner or a Fortune 500 executive or uh, an art producer for an agency. What, sure. what would it be like to experience your website? Yeah. That's great. Great, great, great advice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeb, for joining me and us here for this presentation. And I know people will get a lot of value out of this. One thing that I was thinking about to kind of wrap this up to here is the solutions that you have arrived at here in some ways are tailored to your specific case, your audience, your skills, your interests. Um, but there are also some general principles and things here at work that apply, could apply to many other small businesses or photography businesses too. Mm -hmm. And I think what you mentioned earlier about how you were looking at these other websites and emulating them, but it, it really wasn't maybe working for you following that other model is a, is a, is a good ca case where it's important to look at other people, but if you don't know why they're doing what they're doing, it may not work for you. Absolutely. Yeah. You nailed it. I don't, I don't really have much to add to that. Mm -hmm. uh, other than I would say if, if you thought about any complaint you may have had from any other customer service experience, and then compare that to what you're offering, you can really start to, to see and refine what you're doing. And, you know, if I went to Target and there were no prices on anything, no categorization, no way to even know who to talk to about finding out the information, I wouldn't shop there anymore. I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't even shop there in the first place, you know? So, uh, it, it really made sense to me to step away from what looked pretty and actually provide information for people who are wanting to, to work with me. They want to work with me, but they didn't know how. Right. Cool. Well, let's wrap up here and, um, we can we can always chat after this, um, but thank you so much for for offering all of this uh, this this thought. Yeah, thanks again for having me. It's been okay. great. Okay, sign off. <laughs>